Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today, guys, we are going to be taking a look at what I truly believe is quite easily one of, if not the best knife Giant Mouse has ever made. I personally think it's second best, and I'll explain to you later in the video why, but this is one little change away from being literally my favorite Giant Mouse ever, and it is just an absolute banger. This is not an unboxing. I've had it before. Just put it in the box for presentation purposes, but what we are talking about today is the Giant Mouse Ace Tribeca in titanium. Now titanium is just happens to be the handle material on my model. Um, I have handled the other two models in denim micarta and black G10 and those are easily just as good as this. I'm just a sucker for some good raw plain titanium. But before we go any more into this review, I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now let's take a look at some overall specs on this EDC banger of a knife right here. We have an overall length of 7.375 inches, a blade length of 2.875 inches, and a blade thickness at 130 thousandths. Blade material on this guy, we love seeing it. CPM Magna Cut there in all its glory. And as you can see, or a lot of you have probably noticed, um, Giant Mouse has been making a pretty good transition into a lot of Magna Cut for a lot of models across the board. I don't know if that's going to be the case for everything moving forward, but I am seeing a lot more Magna Cut on Giant Mouse knives, and that's a beautiful thing. Uh, drop point style blade on this guy with a flat grind and a handle length coming in at 4 inches with a handle thickness at 528 thousandths. All titanium on the handle material for this, but as I said before, there is a black G10 and a blue denim micarta option. And hopefully there'll be more flavors because this is a knife I want to see a lot more of. I want to see a lot of variants of this because it is, it's a home run. We'll, we'll go through it later in the review, but I, I just cannot deny how much I'm loving this knife. Uh, a liner lock locking mechanism with the user of a right or left hand tip up carry. One of the big benefits of Giant Mouse, you see that pretty much on everything because they're pretty infamous for the wire clips that are reversible, which I think a lot of people love. Um, I can't say I love wire clips, but I like them and I appreciate the versatility you get in the left or right and how the handle on the side you're not using the clip on doesn't look absolutely hideous. It doesn't look too bad. Uh, we have a weight of 5.1 ounces, which is one of the things that we'll talk a little more about. Uh, a little heavier knife, but there's some there's some pros to that as well. Uh, a price coming in, $285. This is not a cheap knife. Now, very important to note, you can get the G10 or my Carter versions of this for $215. So $70 less um, gets you basically the same knife, just different handle material. And I would not shy away from the Black G10 or Denim Micarta. I've handled both of them at Blade Shows, and they're phenomenal. Uh, manufactured in Maniago, Italy, which I think a lot of people will love to hear. Um, that Italian manufacturing also helps justify that slightly higher price of 285 for the titanium version. So that, that is very important to note. Uh, now let's take a look at some size comparisons here because this knife, in my opinion... In my humble opinion, um, this is basically, in my eyes, kind of like a refined Ace Biblio. It, it's it's so much like it in so many ways. Uh, obviously, the difference is in, you know, just the, certain angles and a little bit of the length, different blade shapes. I would consider the Biblio to be kind of like a modified sheep's foot. Some people would call it a drop point. Uh, it's something in between a drop point and a sheep's foot. Um, as to where the tri Ace Tribeca is a, pretty much a clean and clear drop point blade. Uh, but then another knife that kind of measures up to it very well is the Giant Mouse Ace Nazca. Very, very close to the Nazca. A little more cutting edge of the Nazca because you don't have that choil. But there's two, I think, give everybody a very good idea of the size of this knife. But I got two more because one of these next knives is a Giant Mouse. This right here, the Giant Mouse Ace Grand, which happens to be my favorite Giant Mouse knife. In my eyes, this is still the best Giant Mouse knife because I just love the size of it. It's, it's really just a size thing for me. Um, so there is the Ace Grand. And then we have this knife. 
This guy right here, everybody knows that the Spider Co Shaman. And when someone asks me about what's the best ergos on a knife, like what is the ideal perfect ergos for you on a knife, I always come to the Spider Co Shaman. That's always my number one choice for best ergos on a knife. This guy right here, this Ace Tribeca, this is officially second. Like this is right behind. It's really right up there. It's it, it's on the same level in terms of ergos with the Spider Co Shaman for me. And I never thought I'd say that about a knife with a a blade of less than three inches. Absolutely incredible what they did with the ergos on this knife. It's it's you know it's partly a yes provox in this design, so I shouldn't be surprised. Um, but this is so much like a smaller version of the Spider Co Shaman. It's absolutely phenomenal in the hand. And I truly mean phenomenal in hand. Um, now that we've got the size comparisons out of the way, let's talk about some things about this knife. What really make it different? Because the Ergos are one thing that really sets it aside. It really makes it next level for me. Um, the blade itself is just really good. The, the, there's actually two things about the knife that really make it just uber amazing to me. The ergos and the detent that we'll talk more about when we get to the action. But the blade itself is just a nice, elegant drop point, kind of like a refined Biblio, or a very similar to the Biblio, just a slightly different blade shape. Uh, we have a behind the edge reading of 20 thousandths, nice and slicey with almost a full flat grind you could someone even you could almost just consider that a full flat grind but a very very high flat grind um magna cut's gonna get you that great edge retention and all the toughness um perfect jimping on the spine which would you not expect that from a giant mouse i mean in the perfect spot all the nice tacky goodness uh this knife was made to work hard phenomenal chamfering and crowning everywhere a lot of nice chamfering down here on the choil, which makes it so, so, so comfortable for the index finger, as well as all that good chamfering and, or well, crowning that you have on the spine here, which I think everyone's pretty much used to with Giant Mouse and most Italian manufactured knives. Um, and another really important aspect of this knife is the flipper tab. Very, very nice flipper design, but I tell you, if it wasn't for this jimping, the flipping action on this thing would be garbage because you get so much good traction. It is just a breeze and so enjoyable to deploy this blade. Love how they did this flipper tab. They, they couldn't have done it any better. And if they would have done it any worse, it would have done this knife like the worst possible outcome. It would have been absolutely terrible if they didn't nail this flipper tab and they did. Shape, jimping, on point, excellent. The handle. The handle is just solid. It is so solid, so strong. Um, there's no internal milling here. Let me get a flashlight here. Let me get my Olight because this one here has a low setting to where it won't blind everybody and we can still take a look in here. And you'll see that there is no, the only internal milling is for the addition of the inset liners because you have a liner lock and there's a liner on both sides. So there's really no weight reduced. And really with this backspacer here, uh, let me put this down again. We'll, we'll go back to the light here in a second because there's something else to show you. Um, but with the combination of really no internal milling as well as the addition of this brass backspacer, you do have a rather heavy handle. And I, like I said, the fact that it's heavier than normal means nothing to me in a bad way. It's just worth noting. Um, I wouldn't wear this knife in basket with basketball shorts on or with just gym shorts, but you're not going to notice 5.1 ounces in the pocket if you're wearing khakis or jeans or any type of pants. So it's, it's really not worth worrying about. Um, but it, you do feel that weight in the hand. You feel like it's a, you know, a little more substance in the hand, but it's so smooth and fits so well in the hand, that extra weight it's just there. It's, it's, it's not bad. I wouldn't say it's like the best thing about the knife. It's just, it's noticeable. It's cool. It's whatever. Um, but man, oh man, it is just so, so comfortable in the hand. The only thing that would improve the ergos on this knife would be some type of titanium milled clip that could maybe still fit in the, uh, in the wire clip 
uh, setup, that would be awesome. Um, and I mean something that was that was chamfered and, and rounded to kind of go with the handle. That would make this thing absolutely like the best ergos ever on a knife. But it's still right up there with the Shaman as my favorite. Um, another thing that I notice about Giant Mouse, and again, I, it's a it's a good thing, and it's also not the best thing. But in terms of just strength and stability, it's a great thing. They have stiff liners. And again, you want a nice, solid, reliable liner. That's a very important aspect of any folder because the last thing you want is a blade coming down on your fingers with razor sharp magna cut. That's always a recipe for suckiness and disaster. So yeah, good thing for the strong liner lock, but you do notice that when you go to break the lock of the knife and go to close it, um, especially with the aggressive jimping they have in here. You feel that on your thumb a little. Would it make me regret or second guess buying this knife? Not for an absolute second because I would buy this thing over and over and over again. But it is a rather aggressive liner, more aggressive than other knives on the market. It would be nice if they did some beveling in there on the liner, maybe did a little refining of their liner locks, because it's also like that on really on pretty much everything. Like it's on the Biblio like that. It's on the Grand like that. And they're all basically the same. Great, strong, durable, reliable knives. Um, but a liner lock that will make you feel it in your thumb a little more. So that kind of is what it is. Um, now the action. Oh boy. Let's talk about this action because it is absolutely excellent. Um, firm, crisp, kind of heavy detent, but in the best possible way. I'm going to compare this to something, and a lot of people may have issues with it, but let me explain myself when I say this. This detent is the only detent I have ever felt on any folder that feels like a sharp by design detent. Yeah, let that sink in, because if you've handled a sharp by design knife, designed by Brian Nadeau, uh, he's a master <laughs> at, at his detent system. It is absolutely incredible. One of the most enjoyable detents in all of folding knives. And I'm not saying this is just like it, but it's absolutely the closest thing to a Brian Nado uh, detent on a sharp by design knife that I've ever come across that even made me think that. And this is why. We'll, we're going to take a look at it, and I'm going to explain to you right now because it's also very important to note that this is not – the detent in here is just your typical – we'll look at it right now. It's your typical detent ball. Brian Nado's detent system – there. See that thing in there that right – Right there above my nail. That's the detent ball. Now what you're noticing is that's a big detent ball. A much bigger detent ball than you see on a lot of knives. Um, now Brian Nato's detent system is different. It's one milled piece of steel in there. There's not a detent ball. It's, it's almost kind of reminds you of like a brake pad or something. Like it's milled completely different. It's a completely different way of doing it. But it gives you a very unique action on the knife. It gives you a very clean break on the detent. When the detent breaks, it's just a very clean snap. It's, it's more of a snap than a thwack, if that makes any sense whatsoever. But I mean, just listen to how clean the detent breaks. It's so good. It is so enjoyable, so fidgety. And middle finger flicking this thing, oh my God, it is It is one of the best. Like literally one of the best. And you can middle finger flick it like, so the blade cutout's great and you can like flick up. But I found if you kind of position your middle finger towards the bottom of the hole here and just flick out, it is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. You feel a little more a little more pressure when you flick up and that's good. That's not it's not a bad thing. It doesn't bother me, but it's just so easy to get used to just flicking it out like that and good lord is that good. It is absolutely fantastic. Some of the best action and easily one of the best detents I've ever felt on a knife. Like this thing is absolutely next level in terms of ergos and detent and action. It is so, so good. In terms of action and ergos, it is easily the best giant mouse knife ever made in my opinion. Like by a lot. And that's not to say anything bad about other giant mouse knives. I obviously have four or five at this point that I really, really enjoy for numerous reasons, including the Biblio, including the Nazca, including the Grand. And as I said, the Grand, the Grand is my favorite. 
And to be totally honest, like I said earlier in the video, the only reason the Grand is my favorite is because it's bigger. It's, it's just flat out bigger than the, um, than the Tribeca, as you can see right there, considerably bigger. So this is what I want to see for the Ace Tribeca. While it is amazing and easily one of the most enjoyable knives I've come across this year, I want a Tribeca XL so bad I am going to keep, I'm going to speak it into existence. I'm going to email Giant Mouse. I'm going to post on Instagram. I'm going to say it over and over. The Ace Tribeca is amazing. If you're looking for a blade under three inches and you want something more premium, you want Magna Cut, you want something between in that 200 to 200 or $200 to $285 range, this is it under three inches. This should be your only option. I, I literally love this knife. I want a Tribeca XL. I want a three and a half, 3.3 inch bladed Tribeca XL with a, just a slightly bigger overall shape. And I will be loving my life with that knife. That, that would be, that would easily be like one of my all time great knives. I, I'm not kidding you. I, I love this design. I love the action. The ergos are perfect. A slightly bigger bladed version of this would be like a dream come true for Wayne. It would be so good. But as is, this is still one that I would easily highly recommend all day. Um, I think these are still in stock at a lot of places. And I'm not saying just go after the titanium version either. To be totally honest, I think the G10 and the, My the Micarta versions are probably a better value because that's a considerable savings, like $70 less for the basically the same knife, just different handle. But if you're also just a titanium guy like me and you got to have it, not a bad choice right here. This is a very solid option. One I would highly recommend, guys, the Ace Tribeca from Giant Mouse. Get it in your hand. It is so damn good. Let me know what you think of this. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.